Okay, are you ready? Let's settle in and get grounded. Welcome to a practice that I created the title Spirals of Strength. And yeah, all the universal principles of alignment are deeply encoded with the wisdom of nature and how the body is designed in relationship to, uh, if we can understand the way the world works around us, we can understand what works within us. So your physical body is, uh, has different currents of energy. Uh, we have energy that moves in this um, up and down plane, and then we have spiral energy that helps, particularly once we create a stabilizing force by learning how the um, energy pulls up into the body from the feet up into the hips, and then also pushes back down from the hips to the feet, and will also rise up through the body. So those two primary currents are then supported by these uh, beautiful spirals. So no muscle in your body originates and inserts in a straight line. They spiral around. And if you think of um, the way hurricanes are formed or um, the way the sun arcs through the sky, nothing really does a straight line. I mean, we could say as the crow flies, but when you see even the way birds fly, they they take radical expansion and contraction and there's, um, there's just a brilliance to it. And so when we line up with nature, we get to uh, unwind our bodies, so to speak, in a way that is healthy, but also creates a deeper sense of stability and um, strength while allowing for expansion and release. So this inner spiral works from your feet and it goes up through the main uh, conduit of your legs, but it creates a way that the femur bones begin to move in and they move back and then they move apart. And it moves from the feet all the way up to the base of the ribs or the top of your pelvis. And then from the top of the pelvis, we have an energy that roots us back down and creates a contraction and it draws the femur, uh, the head of the femur bones in and turns them out and um, forward. So we'll play with that as we uh, open to a pose called sundial pose. And in this beautiful time of year where we have the sun in its highest zenith for the longest period of time, we'll just use that as a, a way to open up to the Surya Yantrasana, the sundial pose and see what happens. So. Take a good seat, close your eyes. Even your breath never moves in linear, complete linear fashion. Yes, the diaphragm moves down, but there's an expansion in the muscles that live between the rib cage. So as one part of you learns to root, another part of you will expand back and out and up. So feel your breath move, not just up and down, but back and wide. So you wanna create an expansion of your lower back and then you can rise up and lift the lower back up a little bit towards the navel and towards your heart. That will ask your pubic bone to spiral a little downward towards the earth, asking the groins to soften and hollow out. Once you find a little bit of curve in your lower back, you can strengthen the connection to who you are on the inside by ever so slightly toning the muscles around your tailbone. 
and pulling the back of the buttocks gently downward towards your blanket or your mat. Draw your hands to your heart. And as we take the teachings of spiral, we'll take the sound of Om three times and just listen to how it moves into and out of your vocal cords that are contracting and expanding, how your breath does the same thing and how each Om uh, gently spirals and unfolds into the next one. So full deep breath in and complete deep breath out. Fill yourself up with inhale. start in a pose called mountain pose today and that means coming up to the front of your sticky mat standing on both feet so mountain pose is called tadasana in sanskrit so we find tadasana it's the master pose it's the one that will teach us pretty much every single action we need so i'm going to have you look down and line up your center of your kneecap with the space between the second and third toe, whatever that means for you. And if your knees are quite um, tricky for you, you may need to turn the feet slightly out or slightly inward um, so that you don't overstrain the, the knee joint. But for the most part, try to find parallel with your feet. So we set a foundation and then squeeze your shins and your knees inward towards each other. Take your hands up to the tops of your femur bones and we'll crisscross your wrists and bring them to the upper inner thighs. As you bend your knees, deepen your breath, and now use your hands to push the femur bones and the inner thighs down towards the earth, like water to the earth. So the thumbs are on the top of the thigh and the fingers, all four fingers of each hand on the inside. So just root that down. And so we get um, thighs move in, they turn in, they move towards the back plane of the body and now try to push them apart with your, with your palms. And keep drawing the feet into action, the shins towards the midline. And what this will do when you press your femur bones in back and wide, you might feel a subtle, very subtle curve and ex expansion all the way up to the top of your hip. Now gently pull the tailbone down and you're gonna start to feel how your lower back wants to flatten or round. So find the balance between the thighs moving back and wide and the buttocks moving down and under. Maintain that. And we'll bring your hands now to the back of the, the calf muscles. And if you just gently press the shins forward, think about what your hands just did and now use your muscles. So there's muscles on the inner thighs, turn the femur bones inward a little bit. It might feel like your heels wanna turn out. Resist that. So the feet are grounded, they're anchored. And that'll put a little more delight <laughs> into the backs of your legs. And now we'll release the fingertips to the floor or 
two blocks if your hamstrings are quite tight. Active feet, steady shins. Thighs move in, they move back from the front of the leg towards the back of the leg. And also they move apart. When the femur bones move apart against the steadiness of the shin, you can then pull the tailbone down a little longer, push from your hips to your feet and let your spine grow. Inhale, look forward, plant your hands, step to plank and take a nice deep breath. Holding your plank, deepen your breath, zip up your belly and lift the top of your throat. Bend your knees a little bit in plank and see if you can feel the feet pushing down and your ankles squeezing towards the space between them. Now try to lift higher on the balls of the feet by pushing through the feet and the hands and lift the upper inner thighs. So thighs move in, they move back. And now lengthen the tailbone and lower to your belly. Push the shoelace side of your feet down and lift up into Cobra. Strong feet, deep breath. Inhale up, all fours. Exhale, downward dog with bent knees. Imagine your hands crisscross at the top of your femur bones. Pressing down through your hands, lift your sit bones higher. Keeping the sit bones high, that'll help put curve in your lower back. And now see if you can find the muscles on the inner thighs, push down through the big toe mound of each foot. Activate just up inside the inner knee and try to slide the upper thighs where your hips crease further back. Now imagine you could widen both uh, legs away from midline, except in this beautiful moment, your feet are stuck. So pull the femur bones wide apart and hope you'll feel the broadening across your sacrum and your, your low, low back. Mm. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. If you need a blanket, you'll pad your back knee as you place it down to the earth. Hmm. Move the left knee a little further backwards so that when you straighten your front right leg and lift your toes, your hips remain over your back knee. Flex your toes, spread your toes, push through your heel. Now take that right hand up underneath the uh, hamstring of your straight leg until your fingers come all the way to the inner thigh. Press down through your heel and with your upper back muscles and your elbow pulling wide, pull the hamstrings wide and out towards the right side of your room. And just deep breath into your hamstring here. And a full breath out. Now we'll compact your outer right hip. Keep pulling the hamstrings wide with your hand, but squeeze the outer hip towards your inner left thigh. And that'll, that'll light things up a bit. So deepen the breath. Good. And we'll bend your front knee. Lift your hands up. Deep breath in, reach up. Full breath out, downward dog. Feeling the difference between right and left leg, inhale plank. And remember what you just learned and see if you can apply it, shape shift it to um, from the hamstring stretch to your plank pose and lower down to the belly. Pointing the toes, squeeze the ankles in. Now use that wise right leg to teach the left leg about how the legs spiral from the toes all the way up into your hips. Now pull the tailbone down to lift the heart. Good. Inhale up all fours. 
And exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, outside the wrist. Place your knee. Pick it up, set it even further back. Root down through your front leg and extend. Beautiful. First breath is a feel what you feel moment and just drop in and go, oh, body, love you. Now take the left hand underneath the hamstring until the fingers come to the upper inner thigh. Push the heel down. As you breathe in, expand that hamstring wide to the left. You might even let the hip move out a little bit. That will help unwind. So the spiral of the hamstring, and this, it starts at the top of your hip and inserts below your knee. So see if you can unwind that line by broadening. Keep the expansion by using your hand and the muscles and now contract it and you'll find the muscle on your outer leg <laughs> unwinding a little more. Deep breath in. On the exhale, bend the front knee. Climb up. Exhale, hand up. Now use that same wise energy. Push down into the roots of your feet. Lift. Move the hip back and wide. Now wrap that front buttocks under to lift the heart as you rise up. From here, warrior two, turn the back heel. The challenge with the asymmetrical poses is the back leg needs more of that spiraling in. Take the hand to the upper inner right thigh and pull it away from the floor so much that your front leg wants to straighten. So pull the inner thigh towards the outer thigh and that will help straighten your front leg. So that's the thighs wide. Keep the back thigh moving wide. Now pull the front buttocks down and use the buttocks wrapping under to help rebend the knee. Try that again. Pull the feet to midline, spiral the back leg in, and now widen it as you straighten the front leg. Hold that. Push down through the legs, rise up with the arms wide, and we'll take triangle pose. Couple breaths. And spirals of strength. So the outer spiral will tend to bring a lot more strength to a particular posture. The inner spiral will tend to bring a lot more opening. So we want both. We want opening and strength. Now let's bring the right hand down to your hip. Climb your elbow up to your front knee and now radically pull that front buttocks under to rebend the knee. Look forward, shorten your stance. Pull the front buttocks down and under for strength that will guide that knee all the way towards third and fourth toe. And then reach down into half moon. Keep using the outer spiral as you lower back down. So make that front buttocks roll under, under, under until it turns the knee wider, wider, wider. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. Then turn all 10 toes to the long edge of your mat. Pull the feet together. If we were to let the heels move out, the legs would spiral in more easily, but fix your feet and find how the muscles can work against the steadiness of the feet. Push the hips back, pubic bone to sit bone and find that curve of the lower back, hands to upper thighs. 
Now pull the tailbone down until you feel your low belly get stronger here. Hold that and bring your hands to the floor. Beautiful. And if you'd like to go deeper here, bend the elbows wide and let the heart press forward and down. Inhale, lengthen up. Please turn your right foot to the back edge of your sticky mat, the corner back. Yeah. Bring right form to thigh and pause. Pull the feet to the midline. Pull from the foot to the hip. There's that linear line. Now make the back leg turn in more from big toe to inner knee to upper inner thigh. And now widen the back thigh away from the sit bone. Use your eyes and pull that front right buttocks down and under you. And then lift up from there, pushing through the feet, warrior two. Using the strength of the spirals when they combine together with expansion and contraction and the two unite. So as that back leg inner spirals more, the front leg outer spirals more and we feel more stable in the core. Straighten your front right leg. Hold the stability and really use the outer spiral to bend the front knee. So we're not collapsing onto our front hip. <laughs> and one more time, pull. We'll keep spiraling the back leg in, back and wide, and now pull the front buttocks down and under. Root through both feet for triangle. Right hand to the earth or your block. Couple breaths. Left hand to your hip. Turn your gaze towards your front toes. Shorten your stance. And bring that hand to your knee, your forearm to your knee. Pull the front buttocks under until you feel the belly button. Roll back. Anchor down and hold that outer spiral all the way up to your half moon. Spread your back toes. There you go. Give it your breath. And we'll keep that front knee safe and protected through the strength of the upper outer hip. Pull that right hip down and under as you bend your knee. And up to warrior two. Oh. Turn all 10 toes to the long edge of your mat. Pull the feet in, open your heart wide. Bowing forward, hands to upper thighs, push the thighs back, find that lumbar curve, but support it by pulling the buttocks down towards the backs of the heels. From there, bow in and forward. And we'll take a little skandasana. And left and right. Hmm. Walk it around to your front left foot, lunge, downward dog. Inhale to your knees. Exhale, child's pose. With your next inhale, walk your hands back towards your knees and rise up through the heart. We'll take a blanket for most of you. Some of you are open enough that you don't need a blanket when you go into a deep forward fold. But, you know, never hurts to, to have one. <laughs> mm. 
So let's take the left leg and put it out in front of your right leg. So the right leg can be on bottom. Take the palm of your left hand to the outer upper shin and the palm of the right hand just above the knee on the inside. So the two hands are gonna push together. So push the left hand into the shin, the right hand just above the knee, come up onto the heel. And as you go to straighten the leg, push through the ball of your left big toe and use those two hands in opposing forces. You're gonna help the upper thigh move in, back and wide as you create steadiness with your shin squeezing in. And this will help line up the knee joint so that those spirals, the muscles that attach above and below your knee can unwind a little bit. And keep the pressure as much as you can as you push the heel down and use your core to pull the leg back in. And then push, pull again, push the heel down, push through the ball of your foot and use that um, expansion of the upper thigh against the steadiness of the lower shin. This should feel pretty good. And come up. So one of the greater challenges for knees and hamstrings and lower backs is that the shins, shin bones usually for most people uh, bow out and the knees bow in. And sometimes the knees knock way in. It just depends. They're called an O pattern or an X pattern. In either case, the hamstrings get really tight on the back of the knee and that starts to pull on the attached, the origin of the sit bone and then the lower back. So we'll do side two. Left hand to the upper inner thigh, right hand to the outer shin. Lift your foot, but push through your heel. Sit up as tall as you can. So you take that lumbar curve and lift it. Now with your breath, inhale, push, exhale, draw in. And to the best of your ability, if you were doing this for somebody else, you'd be able to apply more force because you'd be at a different angle. So just imagine like how strong you could be for someone while you help them figure out the spiral energy. One more. And just a little side note, the hand that's on the upper inner thigh, as you go towards straight, you're helping that upper inner knee roll down towards this, the earth. Mm -hmm. You're not pushing the knee joint into the ground. You're helping the muscles realign. There's three particular muscles that really attach to your upper inner thigh. And then there's muscles that attach below the knee and above the knee on the back. So now we'll take the right leg, pull it in, hold the baby toe edge of your left foot and do your best here. You may need to sit up on a higher blanket or a block. Um, I need you to get that lower back and your pubic bone to roll forward and the lower back up. Now see if you can lift your foot and hold your lower back in a curve. Good. Plug the arm bone into your shoulder socket and then let it go. Plug it in and let it go. So this, this is another initiation point. When you plug in and pull the knee towards your outer ribs, can you keep the pubic bone rolling down and forward and the lower back moving in and up? If you cannot, you're back down here. And that's just you being accountable to how do I build strength while I'm seeking length. Because sometimes our mind overpowers our body's ability. So if you can hold the curve and sit up, you got it. Now, if that's good and you're ready to go, 
If not, I want you to come to this pose. So you'll put the foot back on the floor and find a hamstring. There you go. And you'll lift up. Otherwise, we're here. Beautiful. And we'll take hand to heel. And again, another diksha point because diksha means initiation. As soon as we close the arm in, the body wants to slump. So you've got to keep rolling the pubic bone forward and down. And this is all so that we could possibly get to um, the lengthening of the hamstring. <laughs> Even though you're not touching it, or if you want to, you can use your fingers and push through the ball mound of your big toe. And like you're pushing on a gas pedal. Now, I want you to feel where your muscles are going to get taut and recalcitrant. Then you get to find the in, back, and wide of how that hamstring wants to unwind. And you'll hit a point where your body goes a little unstable, a little unstable, and that's the outer spiral moment. That's its shining request. Pull the outer left hip forward and down, even if that means you're done with the journey of leg extension. There we go. Now that should help bring in the outer hip and feel a little more grounded and release. Switch legs. So again, if we're working on hamstring opening, options are you could lie on your back, you could use a strap. You could take the back out of the equation entirely or you could try the forward fold version, the same pose, just less consequence. <laughs> Sit up, hold the, the outer foot and hold yourself accountable. Can you roll the pubic bone down and create curve within fixed setting? Maintain that and see if you could lift your foot. Pull the arm bone in and the knee and see if you can keep that curve. If you started to slump down in seeking this, the hamstring will open more easily actually, but your lower back's not gonna be happy about it tomorrow. <laughs> so sit up tall, lift the low back forward and up, maybe hand to heel. Now the outer spiral here, like the inner spiral helped straighten the leg in Trikonasana. We'll use the outer spiral to help straighten the leg in Surya Yantrasana. So as you bring that hip around and forward and let it move across the uh, central axis of the body, maybe that hamstring will unwind a little easier than if you kept it up or in the front plane. So you play with that part. One hamstring's always a little tighter. For me, it's my other leg. <laughs> so I'll invite you to inquire and go, which one? And you'll know which one. If you're not sure, you'll try the other side again with more of that inquiry. And this one's definitely the one where I get to feel how the leg muscles have gotten so strong that they're not willing to get long here. And so I'm going to See how I can inner spiral a little more, create a little more opening, and then ground it down so I'm not ripping things, <laughs> no ripping, shredding, tearing. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. And release as you cross one leg in front of the other. Before you refine the seat, just pause and take stock and feel. At this point in the practice, you're more capable of discerning perhaps which uh, sit bone is closer to the tailbone. And if you can feel that, go to the other side first. So for me, it feels like um, my left sit bone is closer than my right. So I'll go to what is my right side and I'll create in back and wide with my hands. 
and that brought me into deeper balance. And then the other side needs a fraction of that in back and wine. Then we've got more balanced action. So the spiraling in and out allowed the groin to settle. And then from there, you can ever so gently pull the tailbone to the mat and your lower belly will strengthen. You can more easily hold yourself up in proper curve and length of the back as you bring your hands together. Then a deep breath in, a long breath out. Inhale. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So happy you came. I love you. Yeah.